I'm Cedric Thierry. I'm the head of system engineering at EMT D-Lab Space Division and I'm in charge of designing and researching new materials to protect against space radiations. Are we exposed to radiation? Yes, definitely. Every day when we walk on the pavement, we live in a skyscraper made in concrete, we are exposed to natural occurring radiation. So, do you fly? Yes, we all fly. We all take long-haul, short-haul flight. Just by the fact of rising altitudes, the atmosphere becomes less dense, which means we have a lower degree of protection about radiations coming from space. And when I mean space in this particular case, this is all the radiations coming from the sun. So radiation is, is everywhere, like a CT scan for brain imaging or even smoking, you may know, due to the tobacco and accumulation of radioisotopes. The daily average we are exposed as humans um, depends on the place you live. I would say a range of 3 to 30 millisievert is what we would have on a daily basis. So in space the type of radiation is different. On Earth we are talking about isotopes and accumulating isotopes in your bones, your liver, your brain and so on. In space it's a bit different because the type of radiation would be protons, electrons or heavy ions and those can be hitting you at very high speed and creating a permanent damage to your DNA. So it means long-term damage for your genetic patrimony, for your kids and generation of future space explorers. As a matter of example, if you think about astronauts now into the ISS, they take approximately 10 times the amount of radiation we got here on Earth. Nothing is being done to protect people directly. It's all indirect measures. So the direct protection is typically the aluminium shield you have on the spacecraft, but that's not enough because this is creating what we name secondary radiations, neutrons, again harming your body the same way we described about your DNA. So currently, if you talk to big um, airspace and uh, aerospace companies, they take indirect measures like packing foods and water, which are hydrogen rich and accumulating the radiation to protect the astronauts. And that's not the real solution, it's not a sustainable solution for the future because if we get exposed to longer trips like going to Mars and going back to the Moon, we need something different. The first step will be to uh, develop materials that reach a maturity level, I would say, in terms of uh, material science that would provide commercially available protection for the day-to-day -day life. Second step would be to have a higher degree of maturity, advanced materials that applies to airplanes, for instance, and finally, Space within, I would say, the earliest would be four years, but seven years is a more realistic uh, deadline to get the first contracts to reach that uh, high level of uh, maturity and the required certification to fly something. So what does it look like if we get this right? So first thing is that we will make uh, life in space. Uh, I mean, the trip to Mars or the trip to the Moon safer for the astronauts. Uh, also, I truly believe this is going to help a lot into um, practical or realistic colonization of planets uh, thanks to those radiation protection. So here on Earth I already see a practical application. People come to me with requests, do you have like radiation protection blankets to shield you against the big TV screen, electromagnetic radiation? Yes, the market is already there. If you Google it on some big uh, wholesale website, let's say in China, you will find it. It comes in different colors, fashion, but it's probably not certified at the level of the materials we would develop to go into space. The fundamental thing for me is to demystify and to educate because once we got aware of what is radiation, how we can mitigate the risk, everything becomes simpler. Mm -hmm.